Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. If you're an integrator, do you know if your potential customers bought one of the new PlayStation or Xbox consoles since they came out? Or does any PC gaming? If not, you probably should. Home gaming room projects, as well as esports on the Resi Mercial side, represent potentially hot new revenue streams, thanks in large part to the HDMI 2.1 ecosystem. HDMI licensing president Rob Tobias tells us why it's so important in this week's episode of the podcast. As always, be sure to subscribe to CE Pro's YouTube channel and hit that like button on our videos, or subscribe to the CE Pro podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. Rob Tobias, President and CEO, HDMI Licensing. Thanks so much for joining the CE Pro podcast. We're always up for some HDMI talk here on CE Pro. Well, fantastic. Thanks for having me back. I always enjoy talking to you and your audience. So, Rob, the HDMI 2.1 ecosystem, it, it continues to mature. Obviously, we've got the CD Expo in Indianapolis going on right now with new products being shown. Uh, we have the holiday shopping season, of course, that's going to come up just around the corner. And then right after that, we've got CES going on in 2022. Uh, in terms of, you know, integrators being able to cater to their customers, um, you know, following the CD Expo and customers are going to be planning for, uh, you know, I'm sure a big holiday shopping season. From the HDMI licensing's uh, perspective, you know, what, what would you say are going to be some of the, you know, hot things on all the wish lists that integrators should prepare for? Oh, there's a lot of interesting and exciting uh, things people will wish for for this coming holiday season. And HDMI 2.1 is one of the leading uh, drivers uh, of technology there. And so there's going to be this big upgrade cycle of uh, displays, TVs, monitors, uh, moving up to the 4K 120 uh, game ready, game enabled type of uh, uh, displays, uh, bigger dimensions. Uh, game consoles and uh, gaming PC uh, graphics cards, they're also going to be in high demand. They're, they've been in high demand since they've been out a year ago, but this year you actually be able to get them. And then also uh, new portable gaming consoles uh, that are also driving the 4K, 4K 120 uh, and large gaming monitors as well. So we think those are going to be some of the hot items that consumers are going to want to have. Uh, installed by your integrator um, um, installer base. Sure, and then certainly that opens up a lot of opportunities around the gaming market in particular. And you you mentioned some of those gaming ready uh, monitors and things of that nature. It seems like obviously you know last year the the PlayStation and Xbox consoles. Um, those made a huge hit around the holiday season. They were backed up quite a bit and backlogged. Um, when it comes to gaming, you know, the CEDIA channel, obviously, they put together massive, you know, complex uh, and wonderful home entertainment systems, home theater systems. It seems like it's a no-brainer market for there to be, you know, gaming-specific rooms and that the gaming market is very ripe for them to focus on, especially with HDMI 2.1 and all the features. Um, tell us why integrators you know, should really look that way and not overlook this opportunity. Uh, that makes a, a great point there. There's two types of gaming experience. There's a lean back, uh, which is in your home entertainment area, the traditional home entertainment area, uh, where you put in the game console. Uh, lean back on your couch, use your gaming controllers and, and games. So that's that continues to be a great opportunity. Upgrade the whole uh, traditional home entertainment area with the latest and greatest displays that support gaming, the consoles, uh, the Atmos surround sound systems. But an emerging area is a dedicated game room, and that's more the lean-in experience. And that is driven by the whole PC gaming market and around esports. So all the, the you know, teenagers and youngsters have got that are into PC gaming, it's, I want a giant gaming monitor. Uh, I want my gaming chair. Uh, I want my latest rig, high performance rig, and I need a blazing fast network. And so there's a great opportunity for integrators to upgrade the infrastructure, uh, starting with the home network, um, but that will not only support the gaming room, it also supports the entertainment 
centers throughout the house as more and more streaming happens and more and more 4K and going to 8K streaming, you need a tremendous amount of bandwidth to bring that in. Sure, and we certainly saw that the network uh, over during this time of the pandemic, upgrading the network uh, to an enterprise grade experience is certainly something that integrators have been backlogged with, as well as home entertainment features that you know customers have been looking to add. Now, yes. and the uh, you know the market, the gaming market continues to explode in size. Uh, the U.S. gaming market in 2021 is predicted to be over $65 billion, according to Statistica. And worldwide, the gaming market is over $178 billion. So lots of money being spent on everything from the devices, the installations, and the uh, games themselves. Right. And I would think in terms of... Um... In terms of PC gaming, which is something that I know you're very bullish on, when we're talking about gaming, clearly this doesn't have to be a huge dedicated, size-wise doesn't have to be the type of room that perhaps a home theater or big multi-purpose media room might be, but it still is, so that even opens it up to more secondary rooms that can be outfitted and prepped for these kind of things. Now I know in terms of PC gaming, uh, that might be something a little bit different than when we think of, you know, the PlayStation and the Xbox, but that's something that you're very big on in terms of how integrators can really enhance that experience, not just on the residential side, but there's some commercial and res commercial ma market opportunities around it as well, right? Absolutely. So, you know, not just the home, as you mentioned there, but esports has become a worldwide phenomenon. And there are pro esports leagues that have emerged in the United States as well. They started mainly in Korea, but have quickly gained a foothold as the audiences uh, grow and grow. And universities are setting up esports teams, they're setting up esports majors. Uh, they're investing in esports stadiums where they're going to put in all of this uh, gaming infrastructure. Uh, so there's a great opportunity to. Uh, put these across the uh, commercial areas as well as the residential. And there, you know, at the home, you're talking monitors and, and PCs uh, and the, you know, the university, the esports arena, these are the giant screens, giant sound systems, uh, enterprise level networking and use of HDMI 2.1 to support the latest uh, 4K 120, the auto low latency modes, variable refresh rates, all the things that are critical to a uh, superior gaming experience. Sure, and I imagine that for our audience, uh, naturally we've had, uh, we've seen a really big spike in res commercial opportunities where integrators are translating their skill sets uh, from home entertainment and AV distribution and controls to places like bars and restaurants, mm -hmm. corp, uh, corporate offices, uh, where these days they're also doing certainly, you know, a lot of teleconferencing. And I think certainly between the pandemic and, you know, adding that work from uh, working from home element too, where conferencing uh, and video is playing such a big role these days. Uh, for installers, they're able to translate those skills to places like high schools and, and universities that are installing Basically, computer labs that are catering to these kind of esports in this generation as um, more than just a computer lab experience. This is this is something that's like you know intramural league and and on their way to professional leagues for some of these people, right? Absolutely. You know, instead of joining the basketball team, the, you know, the kids are going to join the the gaming team, the gaming, and the, you know, they're setting up leagues at the high school level, the college level, all that stuff, and they're investing in the the uh, uh, gaming systems that are, are required to have these teams train and compete and it is a it is a form of entertainment you, you know the audience just like an audience would go to the basketball or football games they're coming out and cheering on their local uh, esport team right and i guess it probably also makes sense that i know um and we even saw it a lot on tv last year before you know the more traditional sports began picking play back up but we saw a lot of Esports being shown on ESPN and I think Fox and things like that, and so I think you know it, it just goes to show that uh, 
with some of these setups, also the Twitch platform has been huge. So I think having having that surefire, you know, video conferencing reliable uh, reliability um, has probably played an aspect of it as well with the video conferencing, the microphone, just all these skills that integrators learned over the past year that they're aces at now, right? Uh, it, it translates perfectly to this sort of environment. So, you know, you're, you, the, the setups are very similar. There's a display, there's a, um, a, a camera, there's microphones, there's speakers, uh, sometimes you're on headphones with microphones, sometimes you're blasting sound in an open environment. Uh, it's advanced audio too. All of these games support the, you know, they're merging with Dolby Atmos. So you have the virtual, uh, we have, you have the object-based surround, so it's fully immersive. Uh, you have HDR with Dolby Vision. So, you know, you, you, you have some real incredible setups um, matching the technologies to the games that are going to play. Yeah, it could be a pretty uh, remarkable experience. I kind of envy some of those gamers when I see some of that stuff on TV. It's fun. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of in terms of the customers themselves, and you know, even the integrators as well, um, how is this stuff being marketed to them? Do they know all the capabilities that they can get out of their gaming systems these days, or any capabilities that you know they might not know that their system should be able to handle? if it was installed right. Is there any sort of uh, marketing campaigns going on from the HDMI world to say, hey, look, it, it is time for you to upgrade your system? So we've been working for a couple of years now, our, our HDMI Gaming Ambassador Program, where we sponsor a handful of gamers in the uh, gaming tournaments for Fortnite and League of Legends, uh, which you're, you can find on repeat.gg. And so um, we're a sponsor with them. They help, uh, they put some videos together with us. They talk about the importance of the HDMI 2.1 features. Um, and then we give them some of the uh, uh, tchotchkes and, and things to give away that are uh, useful in Fortnite and League of Legends uh, for their, their consumers. Uh, we get on Twitch, our CTO is a gamer. He'll play against these gaming ambassadors. They'll talk. Uh, they'll be live stream. You'll see pictures of the moving video of them. It's it's uh, really exciting there. Nice. Well, if uh, if it's some way that we can get uh, get our audience to see the CTO's uh, Twitch handle or or watch him in action, you know, let's be sure to do that. <laughs> I think that would be uh, that'd be fun for them too. So, Rob, heading into 2022, um, you know, we're. Uh, going to be thinking about as we started the podcast uh, with the holiday shopping season, but then we have CES right around the corner. Um, you know, there have been questions about um, chip production, supply chain, things like that. What are some of the factors that are also going to make um, the gaming opportunities, you know, be ripe there and fruitful for integrators in the fourth quarter and then heading towards CES, what they'll have to look forward to next year? So we've been in, uh, the whole industry has been dealing with a ship shortage, supply chain issues, lack of product, uh, but we're starting to see some relief there. And especially around the gaming systems, uh, you know, when they were launched last year, the game consoles from Sony and Microsoft were impossible to get your hands on, you know, up to including this springtime. Uh, it's now easier to get a hold of those. So you're, you know, you'll be able to go out and, and complete a system with the game consoles. Uh, same with if you're putting in a PC gaming system as well, uh, you want to get the latest NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards that are, you know, fully capable of 4K, 120, 8K, and an HDMI 2.1. Those two were almost impossible to get, but now uh, the supply crunch is, is starting to ease and, and all of those will be in much uh, more availability uh, this coming season. And then there's an interesting product that, uh, has also emerging uh, Valve, who there's a whole, a lot of gamers that are part of the whole Valve and Steam ecosystem there. Uh, Valve has come out with a Steam Deck. That's a portable device, uh, kind of like the Nintendo Switch. And it also comes with a dock and that dock is HDMI 2.1 enabled. It's a 4K system and it's gonna have all the latest and greatest gaming features as well. So that's. For those who are, are, are love that whole ecosystem, uh, that's another option. Okay, so that's more of a, a portable 
device that people will will and have and be able to hook up to you know potentially a a giant screen and it'll still show up in 4k yes yeah so you plug it into the dock and then you have the big screen gaming experience and then all right sounds good like, so oh, yeah, that's something that i think i'll probably add to my own holiday wish list then and uh <laughs> we'll see about that but uh Anything else that we have heading into uh, 2022 or anything that you're hearing potentially from the display manufacturers that we can look forward to from, from CES or is it still a little early or do we just want to say, you know, 8K is going to be continuing to, you know, try and catch up to where 4K has made itself? Uh, well, 8K continues to push ahead. All the manufacturers will come out with more models. Uh, you'll see some crossover technologies like OLED paired up with uh, Q, Q led uh, to even be even more impressive. So large screens, higher refresh rates, more resolution, the industry continues to push, push all of those uh, vectors. Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to seeing all of those booths as a CES in person happens in 2022 as well. For now, Rob Tobias, HDMI Licensing President and CEO. Thanks again for joining us on the CE Pro Podcast. We really appreciate it. The gaming market is an unbelievable opportunity. I think I'm right there with you um, in agreement on that for, for integrators. So it's always great to spell out, you know, the opportunities for them. Uh, and Rob, we'll look forward to seeing you again on the podcast in the future. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.